Ask the average comic book or superhero movie fan to name the deadliest, most lethal, and brutal comic superheroes, and the same names will probably rise to the top. Wolverine is almost always guaranteed to take a top spot, with insanely powerful heroes like Thor or the Hulk close behind. But those characters are only blessed with superpowers that let them destroy enemies one by one with brute force or directed attacks. But what about the heroes whose very abilities threaten the lives of everyone around them? The movies won't go into too much detail, since it's the claw slashers, punchers, kickers, and enchanted hammer swingers that get the most attention. And usually, the least convenient side effects of a cool superpower are written off or ignored completely. But not by us. In the interest of giving the unsung heroes their time in the spotlight and pointing out how the science of their superpowers poses a threat to everyone they meet, we're taking a look at Marvel's most lethal heroes in our latest docuseries video. Here is Screen Rant's closer look at the real deadliest Marvel superheroes. This is Scott Summers, Hello. also called Cyclops. Cyclops. In most comic books, an incredibly powerful ability, or in the world of the X-Men, mutation, is both a gift and a curse. For Scott Summers, that's his energy blasts, projected out of his eyeballs, or for the comic book geeks out there, an alternate energy dimension released through gateways inside his eyeballs. But most fans won't actually realize just how dangerous Cyclops' power really is. Taking off his glasses and unleashing energy onto the target he's staring down, or focusing that power through a visor might seem simple. But human eyes are anything but simple. Just try to focus on a single point or word on a page, and you'll realize that eyes almost never keep still. They jump around from point to point. These tiny jumps, called saccades, happen dozens if not hundreds of times a minute, and even more often when adrenaline starts pumping, like in the middle of a superhero fight. The worst part? They can happen reflexively, as in the brain moves the eyes without us even realizing. When you add in potentially lethal kinetic blasts firing on each and every single point, Cyclops goes from a mutant powerhouse to a mutant nuclear weapon. Honestly, most superheroes have at least some way of controlling the powers they're given, even if it takes years and years of concentration. But for Scott Summers, no training will keep his eyes still, meaning just a few seconds of scanning a room could reduce it to rubble along with anyone inside. And even if the movies show his mutant ability as a fine-tuned power, they ignore the fact that not every kinetic beam hits its target. If this were the real world, not only would Cyclops be a walking eye beam menace, but every off-target shot could wipe out a bystander a house, a nearby building, or even an aircraft, even if they were hundreds of yards or miles away. But who knows how many people Scott might have killed before he found those ruby red Ray-Bans. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! Thor. It isn't just the Asgardian superhuman strength, endurance, or combat skills that make him deadly, but the electricity that comes with being the god of thunder. When the fight gets out of hand, or he just needs a trick up his sleeve, Thor calls lightning to his hammer, Mjolnir, and directs the electric current onto entire hordes of enemies, or massive monsters. But if this is actually lightning, and fans are told that it is, since it's coming straight from storm clouds above, the release might not be quite as heroic. For starters, it would wound, incapacitate, or actually kill the heroes fighting beside him, since Thor's lightning blast would be equal to a flash from around 100 million light bulbs, and loud enough to rupture eardrums or burst blood vessels in anyone unlucky enough to be standing within a few dozen yards of him. The God of Thunder is effectively releasing a flurry of flashbang stun grenades into a crowd. But the scariest part is that the sound makes up just 1% of lightning's energy. The rest is light and heat. Enough heat to raise the air temperature to close to 70,000 degrees Fahrenheit. In nature, that heat dissipates into the air faster than it can actually burn, which is why people struck by lightning can survive. But when you have Thor unloading a constant stream of lightning, it's a different story. That may not be a problem for the invincible Thor, or protected Avengers like Iron Man or Hulk, but for the human ones, including Captain America, it means injuries. And the same goes for any innocent civilian anywhere near the Asgardian hero. The movies might ignore the actual science behind lightning, but if Thor was to come to your rescue in the real world, it would mean that blinding, ear-splitting, burn-inducing blonde bomb was suddenly the biggest threat to your life, not the villain he's there to battle. You didn't see that coming? Quicksilver. 
No need to worry about Marvel movie villains right here, since both versions of the Speedster, the one from Age of Ultron and the one seen in Days of Future Past, are probably responsible for more deaths than most bad guys. As the saying goes, speed kills, and it's just as true for mutants or gifted test subjects. But speed doesn't usually pose a risk to the actual speedsters, since their muscles, organs, metabolism, and perception have all been magically heightened. But no matter how sound the science fiction might be, a human being can only go so fast, or more accurately, accelerate. Good old-fashioned physics and inertia spoils the fun for speedsters, since it's a rule that really can't be broken. It's only a matter of time before Quicksilver takes a non-speedster along for the ride, his sister in Age of Ultron and Magneto in Days of Future Past. What are you doing? I'm holding your neck so you don't get whiplash. What? Whip. Flash. In X-Men, he even makes sure to hold Magneto's neck to prevent whiplash, showing that filmmakers grasp the problem. So his neck is kept straight, great, but the rest of his organs are liquefied about a second later. Even if a person's skin, muscles, or bones remained intact after going from 0 to 600, the same effect as a car crash traveling 600 miles an hour, the organs inside wouldn't stand a chance. The human body is mostly water, anyway, and the acceleration means a person unlucky enough to be, quote, saved by Quicksilver wouldn't even have a split second to feel as their internal organs were left behind and disintegrated. It's a frightening idea, too. That rescue scene in Age of Ultron may actually be the most gruesome massacre ever committed in a comic book movie, with each one of Quicksilver's victims collapsing a second after the camera cut away. The horror. I need you to be the Ant-Man. Ant-Man. That's right, Ant-Man. It seems only fitting that the superhero who seems the most out of his depth, and literally the smallest, would pose the biggest threat. But he does, and it's thanks to actual science. The movie, like the comics, tries to base Scott Lang's powers and the Ant-Man suit in actual quantum and atomic science. They explain that the suit doesn't shrink the wearer, exactly, but uses pim particles to shrink the distance between the wearer's atoms. In other words, an object's mass stays the same, but it is just compacted by removing some of the negative space between molecules that comprise it. The movie ignores the simple explanation when it makes small things bigger, but it explains how Scott packs the same punch, weight, and strength as a full-grown man when he's cut down to size. But that science becomes a potential planet killer in the movie's third act, when Scott is forced to go subatomic, shrinking to a size smaller than any atom, electron, or recognizable form of matter. The problem here has to do with singularities, what science fiction fans know as the infinitely small, infinitely dense point that a black hole is formed around. Usually it takes the mass of an entire star collapsing to create one, but quantum theorists like Stephen Hawking have claimed that microscopic black holes might happen all the time when atoms and molecules collide, and some at the Large Hadron Collider are even hoping to create one. So why don't we notice them? Because they're so microscopic there isn't enough matter to fuel them, and they explode almost instantly. And that's where Ant-Man comes in. By shrinking to a size smaller than any observable particle, but doing it with all of his mass, Scott Wood, according to actual science, have created a black hole with a ton more mass than would actually be needed to keep it stable. Stable long enough to start pulling in the matter around it, which happens to be Earth and everyone on it. He might escape and save the day, but according to the science the movie itself lays out, Ant-Man wouldn't just be the greatest killer in the history of the planet, he'd be the last. And we thought it was a comedy. <laughs> That's our shocking look at the not-so-heroic effects of Marvel's most heroic superhumans, and why sometimes it's better for comic book movies to play fast and loose with science and their own science fiction. Still, it's always nice to see our favorite heroes in a new light. Which superhero powers do you think could prove to be more trouble than movies or comics make out? Let us know your own suspicions and reactions in the comments, and remember to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one.